Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Ford, and we are here for a poetry discussion, which will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. One being, obviously, the poetry discussion playlist. Now, over 200 discussions in that playlist. You should check it out if you're not here through that playlist, because there is a lot of things going on in there. Now, it will also appear in the Emily Dickinson playlist here on the channel. So if you find yourself here by chance but not design, literature is the only thing that I talk about on this channel. Poetry every Monday, at least every Monday. But also novel read-alongs. We'll talk about one of the novels that I'm going through on the channel right now as uh, part of this discussion. And short stories, writer's quotes, things like that as we go. Um... And if you want to help me out with what I'm doing here, hitting the like button tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers, and I would greatly appreciate that. Um, one of the downsides of, of speaking about literature-specific content, as opposed to book hauls and things like that, is that when you post a video, that video gets shared with some of your subscribers. The fewer people click on it, the fewer people to whom it gets shared. When you were talking about individual pieces of literature, if I have not read this poem, why would I click on this poem? So it just sort of stifles the whole thing before anything gets started. But that uh, is neither here nor there for you. It is just a thorn in my side. We are here for the poem, the poem in question, Most She Touched Me by Her Muteness. And the poem reads as such. Most she touched me by her muteness. Most she won me by the way she presented her small figure, plea itself, for charity. Were a crumb my whole possession, were there famine in the land, were it my resource from starving, could I such a plea withstand? Not upon her knee to thank me sank this beggar from the sky. But the crumb partook, departed, and returned on high. I suppose when sudden such a praise began, T'was as space sang singing to herself and men. T'was the winged beggar, afterward I learned, To her benefactor, making gratitude. So we have here... This uh, she in question, uh, you know, I'm assuming this is a bird. We're talking about a bird. Uh, the winged beggar. We have a crumb mentioned here. Were there a famine in the land? I don't think I could withstand the plea. It was her muteness that won. Well, mute as opposed to what? Uh, muteness of that small figure when normally birds are chirping. But obviously, it's easy to graft this meaning onto a person, right? I don't think that there is any question that it is possible to, even if this is the, if this, if the subject of this poem, what is the poem about? The subject is a bird, then that does not necessarily mean that the poem is about, about a bird, right? So what this poem makes me think of is vulnerability versus weakness. And I want to read a quote from No Longer Human by Osamu Dasai, which I am currently doing a read-along on the channel. There is a whole series over this book. And this quote, I will warn you, is a bit crass. So it's going to sound like I'm going somewhere I'm not. The quote in question is, I never could think of prostitutes as human beings, or even as women. They seemed more like imbeciles or lunatics, but in their arms I felt absolute security. I could sleep soundly. It was pathetic how utterly devoid of greed they really were, and perhaps because they felt for me, something like an affinity for their kind, these prostitutes always showed me a natural friendliness, which never became oppressive. Friendliness with no ulterior motive. Friendliness stripped of high-pressure salesmanship. For someone who might never come again, 
Some nights I saw these imbecile lunatic prostitutes with the halo of Mary. Why do I read such a crass quote for an Emily Dickinson poem? Well, here's why. Yozo, the speaker here, is weak as opposed to vulnerable. When people present themselves as weak, we don't have a whole lot of sympathy for them normally. When someone presents themselves as vulnerable, however, we do have sympathy for them. The winged beggar here presents themselves mutely. Versus in the novel, Yozo is talking about how he does not have a connection with people, and he never could think of prostitutes as human beings. But there's something about them that he finds acceptance with them. He finds camaraderie with them. He finds a sense of belonging with them. Well, if he simply understood that he does not necessarily, he does not have a our speaker here does not have a prevalent role in society. Neither do prostitutes have a prevalent role in society. Both of their, well, maybe I shouldn't do that when talking about prostitutes, but both of these sets of people, maybe I shouldn't do that either. These people here, Yozo and the prostitutes, both have a weakness. That weakness being lack of prevalence in society. If that weakness is not weaponized by either individual. If the person who is weak does not weaponize that weakness by saying, please help me, nor does that person who is weak weaponize the weakness by saying, um, I am judging you, I am judging you for a something based on my own weakness, which Yozo does here. If that is not done, then there might be tenderness there. There may be vulnerability shared between the two people. Likewise, here we have Yozo, who is not um, favored by society, and we have the prostitutes who are not favored by society. If the prostitutes do not condemn Yozo for having to use their services, we'll say, then there can be a mutual moment of tenderness. Now here... In this, in this quote, we have, In their arms I felt absolute security. I could sleep soundly, maybe because they felt something in me like an affinity. He is not verbalizing. Yozo here is not verbalizing his judgment of the prostitutes. So for the prostitutes, he is simply being vulnerable. So they, the prostitutes, in this situation can feel moments of vulnerability. Yozo, however, does not. He lacks that connection. He's just finding someone else with whom to be weak. But in this poem from the wonderful Emily Dickinson, most she touched me by her muteness. Most she won me by the way she presented her small figure, plea itself. Simply being there was the plea for charity. Simply being there was the plea for charity, rendering our speaker completely Without defense, were a crumb my whole possession, were there famine in the land, were it my resource from starving, could I such a plea withstand? Our speaker here is so moved by the vulnerability of this winged beggar, so moved by that tenderness shared between them that our speaker is ridden without the power to deny. There is vulnerability there, and it is shared between the two of them. All of this is accomplished by Emily Dickinson in, uh, well, let's see here. Let me see if I can figure this out real quick. I'm sure this is absolutely titillating to watch. That is 
20, there's no way that's just 24 words. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No, that's not 20 words. It's not 24 words. You're lying to me. All of this is accomplished certainly in less than 100 words. What are you doing here? Why isn't this counting? Count. It doesn't matter. The brilliance of Emily Dickinson is able to... Exp so one of the definitions of poetry is that poetry can amply... Poetry cannot be explained in fewer words than it took to write. I think that's... What is it? It's something like that. It's Poetry cannot be summarized. And poetry certainly cannot be summarized in fewer words than the poem itself is. Now, you start getting into some of the Robert Frost stuff, and maybe we can have a discussion. But that's one of the loosey-goosey sort of definitions here of poetry. It, it You cannot strictly summarize a poem because there is a difference in what is it about and what is it about. So that is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you enjoy what I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out here on the channel. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, hitting the subscribe button will keep you posted when I uh, post all of this literature content that I so ineptly put on YouTube.